So generally speaking, there are there are three main types of pacemaker that you would consider. Your average bog standard pacemaker is there to speed the heart up if the heart goes too slowly. That's all it does. You can't prevent things like atrial fibrillation from having a pacemaker put in. But if you're on one of those unlucky people who have AF and their heart goes really high and then really low and then really high again, that's really annoying. But you can't give them a tablet to stop it going too fast because they'll go really slow and fall over. You can put a pacemaker in to stop them going too low and then give them a beta blocker tablet to stop them going too fast. That's sort of a belt and braces approach to AF. Um, there are th th There's these two little distributor caps that you think about in the heart that control the timing of the heart. And as you get older, they get a bit diseased and they can... Uh, misbehave and some of the impulses will get missed from going from the top of the heart down to the bottom and if you miss one or two that's not so bad but if you miss four or five in a row you'll black out because the bottom chamber doesn't contract uh, and down you go so having a pacemaker put in for those reasons that's yeah, probably about 80 percent of the pacemakers i put in are put in just to speed up a, an, an aging heart basically then you've got uh, pacemakers that are good to treat people with heart failure now picture it like this. If you're standing on a uh, on a beach and you've got an ice cream cone in your hand, okay, and that ice cream cone in this analogy is your left ventricle. Now, the pointy bit on the bottom of the ice cream cone is where the electricity should come out and it should flow up both sides of the heart simultaneously so that when you view the heart like that, it should contract like that, okay? Now, if the electrics are failing and if the heart is failing, the electricity won't come out from the pointy bit down the bottom. It'll come out from, let's say, where your thumbnail is, and it'll wrap around the side of the heart, round like that. What that means is that the heart will, this side of the heart will contract before that side of the heart. So it'll go like that instead of like that. And if it goes like that, it spends quite a lot of its energy swooshing blood around in the heart rather than pushing it around the body. Now, if I induce that electrical abnormality in you, you wouldn't know about it because you've got loads and loads of reserve, you know, if you've got an ejection fraction of 60%, you might drop it down to 55%. You wouldn't know about that. But if you're at 35%, or if you're at 30%, and I drop it down to 25% by inducing this, what we call dyssynchrony, that's the difference between you being able to walk up a flight of stairs in one go, or having to stop halfway up for a breather. You know, it's potentially the difference between being able to lie down flat at night to have a good night's sleep or having to sleep in an armchair you know it's the difference between whether you can go and make your own cup of tea or whether you have to get your wife to do it but that comes down to you know personality perhaps for some people <laughs> so what you can do is put a pacemaker wire on this side of the heart and this side of the heart and make both of those walls contract simultaneously again that's a, a device called a cardiac resynchronization device and it's a very good treatment for people with certain electrical abnormalities and heart failure and it's a, it's a procedure that I spend a lot of my time doing. Then your third type of pacemaker or cardiac device is a defibrillator. And that really brings us back to people that have either survived a cardiac arrest. So if you, if you have a cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. you may well come to me to then have a discussion about having a defibrillator implanted inside you. So these things that are on, you know, church walls, down at the village hall, that kind of thing in, in a box, you can get really small versions of it that we can implant inside the body and that will detect an electrical abnormality, a life-threatening electrical abnormality, and giving you an electric shock to get you out of it and it'll do it within about 12 seconds and you know, it will save your life. So, uh, you know, various people with heart failure, people with certain types of heart, you know, previous heart attacks, some genetic abnormalities, they'll have defibrillators implanted that's mad. I didn't. I didn't even know they they had internal defibrillators. Mm. Yeah, didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah I like them. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? they're like, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, why are they like with things like um, uh, like heart rate monitors and, and airport like metal detectors? Yeah, did, did it? So, so, so they have a little card. Yeah, there, there's today. four or five. Yeah, there, there's four or five different companies in the world that make these things. Right. So it doesn't matter where you end up in the world. If you if you have one of these devices, there's going to be someone around that can interrogate the thing for you. Um, but you will get a an ID card. It'll have your name. It'll have the 
you know, the serial number of the device that you have. It, it's not so much that you'll set the alarm off, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, you, see, you go through, you set the alarm off, you hold your card up, that's fine. But the thing that people sometimes worry about is these airport scanners uh, work by producing electrical uh, fields. And if you have a wire and you induce a magnetic field around that wire, you produce electricity on the line of that wire. And if you produce electricity along that wire, then the device might see that electricity and it might see it as white noise. It might see it as noise, but it will detect it as a heart rhythm abnormality. And the worst case scenario is that it will think that your life is at risk and it'll <laughs> deliver you a shock when you didn't actually need the shock. What will that do to them? Nothing? Well, it bloody hurts. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, they say it's like being kicked in the chest by a very, very big horse. Wow. I mean, it's over in a, in a fraction of a second. And it can... Not to floor it, you, though, huh? It, it, oh, it'll floor you, yeah. yeah. And it can be dangerous if you're very unlucky. But it's just really very, very unpleasant. You know, we, we have people who have to have counselling after that. Counselling? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a proper big traumatic event. You know, you're minding your own business and all of a sudden you get a... You know, so your TV remote, 3 volts. Mains, 240 volts. The defibrillators I put in are 800 volts. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, so it's a large amount of electricity. big uh, shock, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a big <laughs> shock. I mean, they do their job, but it really hurts if they go off. Does it have to be that big to, for it to work, I imagine? That's yeah, what... I mean, you you need a certain amount of energy being delivered to the heart in one big go. So most of the, most of the device is just battery and capacitor. Charge, 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 wallop. 